Hi guys, hope you enjoyed yesterday's video and are looking forward to another day of learning. We're going to start off with our reading as usual and today we are reading The Three Billy Goats Gruff. Okay, so again I'd like you to pause your screen and have a read of it yourself, so pause it now. Fantastic, now we're going to read it all together, okay. Once upon a time there were three Billy Goats Gruff who lived in a valley. One day, they made a plan to cross a bridge that had a grumpy troll underneath. The smallest billy goat gruff came to the bridge. Who's that trip trapping over my bridge? growled the troll. It's only me, the little billy goat gruff, said the smallest goat. Then I'm going to eat you up, roared the troll. But my brother is much bigger. You should wait for him, said the smallest billy goat gruff. Next, the medium-sized billy goat gruff came to the bridge. Okay, again, pause the video and have a read of this page. Okay, and now we're going to read it all together. Who's that trip trapping over my bridge, growled the troll. It's only me, the medium-sized billy goat gruff, said the goat. Then I'm going to eat you up, roared the troll. But my brother is much bigger. You should wait for him, said the medium-sized billy goat gruff. Soon, the biggest billy goat gruff came to the bridge. Who's that trippy trip trapping over my bridge, growled the troll. It's me, big billy goat gruff, said the goat. Then I'm going to eat you up, roared the troll. Oh no you won't, shouted the biggest goat, and he butted him off the bridge. The troll was never seen again. The big billy goat gruff joined his brothers in the field of sweet green grass. Okay, so we're going to go on to our questions, and again, I'd like you to write these straight into your exercise books and in full sentences, okay? So number one, how many billy goats are there in the story? Okay, so you probably know this one without having to look back at the text, okay? But remember, like what we've said before, it's always good to check back to the text. But this one is in the title, isn't it? So you need to write your sentence. There are, I've put they by accident, let me just change that. Sorry, William. There are however many billy goats in the story. So pause your video while you write your full sentence out for me in your best handwriting. Okay, so you should have there are three billy goats in the story. Well done. Okay, question number two. Who lived under the bridge? So have a look back to the story because for this one, I don't just want you to tell me who it was, the basic answer, but there is another word, an adjective that they use in the story that tells you who lived under the bridge. So I want you to have a look on your own and see if you can answer that for me. So you should be putting number two and then you should write who it is and then lived under the bridge. Okay, so pause your video and have a go at writing that one for me. Okay, you should have the grumpy troll lived under the bridge. Okay, because in the text it ju didn't just say the troll, it said it was a grumpy troll. Question number three. Which billy goat gruff went first? So, remember, they'll have it in order in the story. So have a look in the story as to which one went first. And I want you to have a think about that. And your answer should be in a full sentence. So you should say which billy goat gruff, and then you should put went first. Okay, so pause your video while you have a go at writing that one for me. Fantastic. So you should have the smallest billy goat gruff went first. Well done. Question number four. What did the troll say when he could hear them coming over the bridge? So I want you to write the exact words that the troll said. Okay, so have a look at, on the text. Okay, pause the video to have a quick look. And remember, when you write your answer, you should start with the troll said, and then tell me what the troll said in a full sentence. Okay. So pause the video and off you go with that one. Fantastic, you should have. The troll said, who's that trip trapping over my bridge? Fantastic, well done guys. Question number five. What did the troll want to do with the goats? What did he want to do with them? So your answer should start with, the troll wanted to, and then finish it off for me. So pause your video and finish that off for me. 
Okay, you should have the troll wanted to eat them up. Fantastic, well done guys. Make sure you're still doing your best handwriting, don't rush it, okay? Question number six. What did the biggest goat do to the troll? So think about when, when in the story the biggest goat sees the troll, so it's near the end, isn't it? So we need to be looking near the end. And I'd like you to write down what the biggest goat did. So your sentence might look something like this. The biggest goat, and then you can go on and tell me what the biggest goat did. So pause your video and finish writing that one for me. Okay, so you should have the biggest goat shouted and butted him off the bridge. Okay, well done guys. And that's the end of our reading and we're going to go on to some maths. So, same as we've done the last two days, but we're counting up in tens this time. So we need to add on ten every time. I know most of you are really good now at um, just being able to do them in your head. Okay, so zero, ten, twenty, thirty. What comes next? 40 okay so I'm going to draw that one on but then like we did yesterday I want you to have a go at writing as many as you can okay up to at least the end of your line so pause your video and have a go at writing as many as you can going up by 10 every time okay and what I wanted to have a look at today was to see if we could like we did with a ruler when we were measuring length and height so we're going to have a look if we can measure the capacity now, if you remember, there was a cut and a muh when we measured the length, and that was centimetres. But when we measure liquid, so like water or milk or anything that's a liquid, it's measured in millilitres, which is a muh and a luh. So like I've got on top here, it's a muh and a luh. So that means millilitres, okay? So it's the same as a ruler, but we don't have to worry about lining the ruler up with this because on a, on a measuring jug, which you've probably got one at home if you want to have a look at it, there's already all the markings that we need on the side. So when we measure, all we need to do is look at where the water level line is. So here, if you can see, the water comes up to here, okay? And we need to see where that's lining up to. So there's a big line here and it says the number next to it. So what number is this? Who can tell me what number this is? Fantastic, it's 500. And remember, we're measuring in millilitres, okay? So all together in this jug, there is 500 millilitres, okay, so that's our answer, I've put our answer just on the left here, okay, 500 millilitres. So what I want you to do is have a go at some of these, so I, in the next few slides, like this one, I've got some jugs, and I want you to have a look where the line is, and write down in your books with the number, so you'll put a number one, and next to number one, I want you to write how much liquid is in the jug, okay, so here's where the water line is, what number is it next to? I know it's, it goes through the number, but you can tell because it goes up in hundreds. We've got 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, okay? And it goes all the way up in hundreds, so you should be able to guess what that one is, okay? So what I want you to do is have a go at writing how many millilitres of liquid we've got in here. Okay, you should have 200 millilitres, okay? Because it's on the 200 line, okay? Fantastic. Let's have a go at the next one. Have a look at this one then. Where does the line go up to on this one? Pause your video and have a go at working that one out. Fantastic, you should have 400 millilitres for that one. Okay, so well done if you got that, guys. Right, go on to number three then. So have a look where the line is on this one and I want you to have a go, pause the video and have a go at writing that one down. How much water have we got in there? Okay, you should have 700 millilitres for that one. Okay, well done. We're going to go out, have a go at number four. So look where the line goes up to on number four and pause the video while you write that down. Okay, you should have 100 millilitres for number four. Well done. Okay, let's have a look at number five then. So look where number five goes up to. It's right near the top. So it's, it's nearly full, but what I want you to do is write down the number of how much is actually in there, how many millilitres. So pause the video and have a go at that one. Okay, you should have a thousand millilitres. Okay, well done. Now, you don't have to know this, but I'm just going to tell you that a thousand millilitres is also the same as one litre, and one litre is written like this. So you'll have your number one, and then a l, one litre. Okay, 
we are done and we're going to go on to our writing now. So, why do we write letters? Let's recap that again. Why do we write letters? It's to give people information, okay? So we've looked at the purpose and features of a letter. You should be experts on this by now of why we write them and what they should include. Remember, we always use our sentence checklist. So your task today is to write a letter to me, so to Miss Bowen, telling me what you did over Easter. So remember, it has to start with to Miss Bowen, okay? And then you need to tell me in the right order what you did over Easter. And then how should you end your letter? Put who it's from, okay? So remember your sentence checklist. I'm going to put back the last slide so you can just check everything, okay? But I want you to write me a letter telling me what you did over Easter. Okay, so pause your video and have a go at that, making sure you've got everything you need. Fantastic, well done guys, and I can't wait to see some of those. And lastly, we've got our phonics. So the sound we're doing again is the air sound, but we've got some slightly different activities today. So first, we're going to read the words again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to read them, but I'm not going to read them as well this time. I want you to read them on your own, okay? Are you ready? Okay, so we're going to do a listen and read. So I've written my sentence wrong. I'm going to read it out to you. And what I need you to do is write the sentence again in your books, but make it correct, okay? Correct my sentence. So I've written, my dog has long hair and he always jumps up onto the chair. Okay, what have I done wrong in my sentence? Have a think, try and spot it out and then write down the correct sentence. Okay, so pause your video while you do that. Fantastic, okay, so I did the wrong air sound. I did a, br, e, but it should be a, i, r, okay? So you should have this written down on your page, okay? My dog has long hair with the a, i, r, and he always jumps up onto the chair. Okay, well done, guys. Now we're gonna do some more listen and writes. I'm gonna read some words, and what I would like you to do is put them on the right side for me. So whether it's an er, a, it, r, word or an at, r, e, word, okay? So we've got hair. So which side is hair going to go on? Okay, fair. Chair. Dare, bear, and care. Okay, now I've done another example on this page. There's a few more here, so I've got stare and fairy on here as well. So on this side, we've got hair, fair, fairy, and stare. Okay, but on this side, the first two are the same. I've also got hair and fair. Now, do you think these are right or wrong? Okay, some of you might think they're wrong, but actually they're not. They're just different words. So even though the top ones both say hair, this one means hair as in like the hair on your head. But this one is a hair as in the animal hair. So the ones that are like a little rabbit, that kind of hair. And it's the same with fair. So fair on this side is like a fun fair. Or if you say something... You have to make something fair, like a game has to be fair, okay? But the fair on this side is like um, when you have to pay a bus fare. So when you have to buy your bus ticket, you pay a bus fare, okay? And on this side, we've got dare and care. Now, another one we could think about is bear. So if I put bear on this side, would you say it's right or wrong? Okay, you might think it's wrong because that's not how we spell bear as in teddy bear. So that's a whole different air sound. That is air a r. So I'll add that one on the middle because that's another air sound that we've got. Okay. But even though this one's not spelt like that, 
it's still right because we're not talking about a teddy bear here. This kind of bear is like if we say, uh, I was barefoot, okay? That's the kind of bear we're talking about. So what I'd like you to do now is using some air sounds. So I want you to use mainly the at it rut words, but if you want to put a different word on, that's okay as well. But make sure you have got an at it rut word. I'd like you to write another sentence, okay? Making sure we're following our sentence checklist. Okay, so pause your video and have a go. Fantastic, well done guys. Hopefully you've got a capital letter. You should have finger spaces. You should have beautiful handwriting, a conjunction and some punctuation. Well done if you've remembered all five of those things. If not, just remember to try and get them in next time, okay? And that is it for the end of today's video. Okay, so well done guys. Don't forget to keep sending me in your work and activities to the email address below, okay? Get your grown-ups to take lots of pictures and send them in to me. And then hopefully you can make up to Monday's shout-out video, okay? See you tomorrow.